21st Century Fox making another attempt to acquire what it doesn't already own of B Sky B. The deal would give Fox control of a pay TV network spanning 22 million households. Bringing together Sky News with Mr. Murdoch's UK newspaper titles would give them much concentration of media power in fewer and fewer hands. The Paris-based media watch organization Reporters Without Borders has called him a predator of press freedom. Comparing him to other human rights abusers, the U.S. NGO Freedom House has listed him among the worst of the worst. They're talking about the authoritarian leader of the Russian Republic of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov. Kadyrov followed his father into the president's office and just last month celebrated his 10th year in power. The Kadyrov's political rise came after they abandoned the goal of Chechen independence, over which two brutal wars were fought in the 1990s and made a deal with Moscow and Vladimir Putin. Since then, the capital Grozny has been rebuilt with some shiny new towers, but a free press no longer exists, and the few journalists still reporting on human rights in Chechnya do so at their own risk. At least two have paid for their work with their lives. Many more would-be critics have been forced to flee the country or have just disappeared. The Listening Post's Johanna Husnow on the challenges journalists face when reporting on Chechnya under Ramzan Kadyrov. Over the past two years, Chechens have witnessed a series of disturbing spectacles unfold on their state television channel, Grozny TV. Ordinary Chechens, accused of insulting the state and its leaders online, are made to apologize, live, on air, to the head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Gadirov. Everyone also knows the case of Adam Dikayev, the young man who dared to make jokes about government propaganda. He was made to apologize on camera in his underwear. In another case, a woman posted criticism against Kadyrov on social media. She and her husband were taken to the Grozny TV studio. They were humiliated and had to ask Ramzan Kadyrov for forgiveness. These people are pressured to refute their words publicly, and undoubtedly this is aimed at terrifying the Chechen population. The shame and humiliation applies the sort of pressure that direct violence would. This is part of a campaign by Chechen authorities to ensure they are always depicted positively. You have to write about the authorities as you would about the departed either good or nothing at all. Ramzan Gadirov has ruled Chechnya since 2007 and has succeeded in eliminating any space for dissent. Critical media have been silenced and the outlets that do still operate in the Republic all have to toe the government's line. The Internet is one of the few remaining places where Chechens can voice any dissatisfaction with the state. Internet access hasn't been completely shut off and social media is relatively accessible. Possibly because blocking Twitter and Instagram would deprive Kadyrov, who posts regularly on both sites. However, increasingly, even the internet has been squeezed. And for Chechen audiences, there are precious few outlets or platforms for alternative narratives. The treatment of Kadyrov in the local media is very similar to the treatment of Putin in the Russian national media. If he says something, that is the news. За игрой пристально наблюдал и главный болельщик, глава республики. And if he doesn't say something, well, there isn't much going on. Kadyrov is a very colourful man, and he does lots of things that journalists love. He hangs out with A-list Hollywood stars, he has a pet tiger. Underneath that, in terms of actual day-to-day -day journalism, he's been catastrophic. The government is keen to present anyone who is critical of the government as an enemy. If you are a Chechen and you try to work as an independent journalist, you will be warned off. And if you continue, you will be hurt. And if you continue, you will be killed. The journalists who have remained in the Chechen Republic work as pro-government propagandists. If any independent observer watches TV or reads newspapers in the Chechen Republic, he will see similarities, not even to late communism, but to Stalin's times, when the only thing permitted was to praise, as though everything is perfect. 
We contacted numerous Chechen officials and news outlets to hear from them about the state of the news media and the Republic. No one responded to our interview requests. The last outpost of critical journalists has become Russia. The Moscow-based newspaper Novaya Gazeta and a site called Caucasian Knot are two of the few news outlets still reporting abuses in Chechnya. They do this work at considerable risk to themselves. Kadyrov continuously attacks critical Russian journalists via state media or through his social media accounts, and in some cases, it hasn't ended at just threats. In 2006, Novaya Gazeta's prominent Chechnya reporter, Anna Politkovskaya, was shot dead in her home in Moscow, reportedly on the orders of the Chechen authorities. Three years later, her colleague, Natalia Estemirova, who wrote extensively on Chechen human rights abuses, was kidnapped in the Republic's capital, Grozny, and murdered. And last year, a journalist working for Caucasian Knot, Zalovdi Geriev, was kidnapped, tortured, and forced to sign a confession on drug charges and sentenced to three years in a Chechen prison. It is very successful because for many who are living outside of the region, uh, especially in Russia. It is uh, clear taboo to uh, criticize or even talk publicly about um, Chechen realities. These are sensitive issues and many Russian journalists are practicing self-censorship when it's coming to the issues related to Chechnya. The current Chechen regime has a long history of liquidating its critics so threats are not the worst that can happen. The regime has built a reputation that is willing to solve all problems with violence. While this is alarming, it's not completely effective. It doesn't stop all non-Chechen journalists from writing on Chechnya. We at Novaya Gazeta and colleagues at Caucasian Knot continue to cover abuses in Chechnya, and it makes the authorities there really angry, especially since we have a lot of journalistic credibility. The Kadyrov family owes its rise to power to a political decision taken by Ramzan Kadyrov's father, Ahmad Kadyrov. During the Second Chechen War in 1999, Kadyrov Sr. abandoned the separatist cause in exchange for a deal with the Russians. Ever since then, Moscow has propped up the Chechen state and the Kadyrovs have been keen to manage their media image, not just at home, but in Russia as well. There's an element of constantly reinforcing himself to a Russian audience. Most Russians, certainly Russian nationalists, don't like him. He is seen as, as, as receiving way too much money from the centre. He is elevated, he's the, the hero of Russia, despite the fact that he previously fought against Russia. So by stressing his loyalty and saying, look, I, I'm on your side, I personally think it's, it's a bit of a, an act. Um, Kadyrov is, is loyal to Kadyrov. But that would... This constant demonstration of loyalty to Putin is a way to ensure he can do whatever he wants in Chechnya. And what has Putin done? He has permitted Kadyrov to build up his military forces. The Chechen state suppresses separatist movement and consolidates Russian power in the Republic. Kadyrov is part of Moscow's Chechnya strategy. But what Putin didn't notice along the way is how de facto an independent regime came into existence. After two devastating wars and nearly 20 years of Kadyrov rule, Chechnya has rehabilitated itself somewhat. The capital Grozny is peppered with shiny new buildings, but the city's gleaming surface doesn't quite hide the political shambles the Republic is in. Ordinary Chechens have no political agency, the media climate is oppressive, and there's an ongoing insurgency carrying on the fight against the Russian state. Chechnya has hundreds of news stories going untold, and the leader of the Republic, Ramzan Gadyrov, is making sure it stays that way.